campaigner, we've been talking a bit about fiscal policy already. Now, what does that mean? Well, fiscal policy is about government spending and taxation. And so typically each year, a government will design what they call their budget. You'll note that I don't use that term in relation to governments because it invokes the household budget analogy, so it's a framing issue in my view. So I call it a fiscal process or statement. But each year the governments will sit down and work out their spending plans and their tax policies and they have various ideas about why one would go up and down and all of that. So in this neoliberal era, Governments have a tendency, and this is reinforced by inputs from economists, to think of the fiscal position, that's the difference between government spending and taxation, as a target in itself. So in an accounting sense, if the government spends more than it gets back in tax, it's running a deficit. And if it spends less than it's getting back in tax, it's running a surplus. And the political narrative has been to say that surpluses are good and deficits are bad, and so we, we need to target surpluses. And you get a situation where, say, a government starts with a deficit and economists advise them to introduce an austerity program because that'll reduce the deficit if they cut spending and maybe increase taxes or do both. And at the end of the year, when the accountants come out and tell the government what's happened, they observe the deficit's actually gone up. And the national debt's actually gone up because they match the deficits with debt issuance. So what gives? Well, what gives is that the government really can't control its fiscal outcome. And what does that mean? It means that non-government sector is a determinant in what the final fiscal position will be in each period by our saving and spending decisions. How does that work? Well, that works because when we spend more, for example, economic activity rises, firms produce more, national income rises, and as a consequence, tax revenue rises and welfare spending falls, even if the government doesn't change anything. And so when the economy's stronger, operating at higher pressure, the fiscal deficit will fall automatically. Now take the opposite example. If the government starts hacking into spending with the target of reducing its deficit, you now know from the simple macro rules we've built up that that cuts in government spending will cause firms to lay off workers, incomes in the economy will drop, spending will drop, and tax revenue will drop and welfare spending will increase. And so without the government doing anything other than trying to pursue austerity, the deficit rises, even though it thought that it would be reducing it. And debt rises because the deficit's rising. And so it's a flawed strategy to target a particular fiscal balance. And this leads to us to understand that the purpose of fiscal policy is not to achieve any specific fiscal position, it's to achieve full employment and prosperity, material prosperity. And the deficit will be whatever's required to do that. Or it could be a surplus, depending upon the non-government sector spending decision. So when the non-government sector is spending strongly, the government can spend less strongly. And when the non-government sector decides to reduce its spending in the economy, the government automatically has to increase its net spending to maintain high levels of employment and economic activity. That's the purpose of fiscal policy, and that should be the only concern of government.